Hi guys, I am excited to hop on here and show you uh, what I've been working on at home. Um, I know some of you have asked before about using Fusion Mineral Paint to paint countertops. Well, I'm gonna show you what I've been working on. I'm very excited. Okay. So these are my current countertops. Um, I know the lighting isn't great, but I painted the bottoms gray um, last fall, this past fall, and I'm going to leave the uppers white. I also painted my backsplash, oh, at least six or seven months ago. Um, they were just a peel and stick tile. I didn't love them. They were kind of looking a little bit dated, so I painted them all white. I still don't love them, but I know that big part of that is the fact that my countertops are an ugly arborite beige. So I did some transformation last week and I have painted my countertops to look like this. So I'm very excited how it turned out. And actually, I don't know if you can tell, but my backsplash is even a little different. The only difference is that instead of a flat paint, I actually put tough coat gloss on them and so shine them up so they actually look a little bit more like a genuine tile. So I wanted to hop on here and show you guys how I've got my countertops to look like marble. So step one, very obvious in a kitchen, you must clean it well. So use something that is a degreaser. Um, my recommendation is TSP, especially when you're in a kitchen, you know there's gonna be grease. So clean it really well, that is step one. Step two, is to prep it. So I'm priming using Fusion's Ultra Grip. I'm just gonna show you here how I did it. If I can do this while recording with one hand. So this is the Ultra Grip. And basically, I'm just gonna take a sponge and it's like glue, basically. I'm gonna spread it around, um, just kind of in nice, thin, even strokes. You can see it's actually a clear product, so you don't really see much of a difference other than you can see there that I have applied it. So applying this Ultra Grip across the whole countertop um, and I'm going to give it a good three or four hours to dry because I want it. <coughs> uh, I'm just going to take my time with the countertops. I really want every, every step in the process to have its proper drying and cure time. Um, that will help everything adhere really well. So that is step two, and hold tight for step so three. So step two, or was the ultra grip. Step three, I'm moving on to, is painting my first coat. So I would recommend either using a small um, microfiber roller or a really good quality brush. And as you can see, my well-used Stallmaster brush um, is what I'm going to be using. I'm doing my first coat in casement. And this is definitely um, a project that, well, this paint technique or this paint finish of the marbling is a multi-step project. So um, obviously you can do a solid color countertop. That is totally still an option. Um, I just wanted some dimension. Um, to break up the solid white of the uppers on my cabinet and the backsplash. So I'm going to do one full coat of this, come in um, and do a second coat of white, just because it was a beigey color that I need to cover in the beginning. So um, step three and four will be doing two coats of the white. Okay, so for this next step, so this would be step five, for our process because three and four were painting two coats of the white, so our base color. So what I'm doing is taking a dark gray and a lighter gray and I'm kind of playing around with them both and I still have on hand my white because I do need that for blending. So I started with a really fine tip brush and I really like having um, some water on hand too just to keep my lines wet. So what I'm doing is actually painting some really fine veins on my counter with the gray. Now this one as you can see has already been painted and it's dry. Um, it doesn't matter if it dries, it's actually kind of works well when it's dried a little bit 
As you can see, I just got my paintbrush a bit wet, so I wanna do a bit of dry brushing in that area with the gray. I'm spreading it a little bit. Um, it's feeling pretty scary right now, I get it, I know. Um, but what I wanna do is take my white brush and come back and I'm going to kinda dab it with some of my white. And as you can see, it's blending a little bit more. And I do wanna keep lots of white on hand because you obviously don't wanna under blend. Over blending is way better. So you can see I'm still just stippling and I'm going right over top of those dark lines that I did and that is actually the trick. I thought when I started that I wanted fine lines um, and veining to show but the nice thing or the thing about it with marble is that sure some of the veining shows but I actually didn't really like the look of all the veins showing. Um, I thought it looked a little bit too fake so I went a little bit more authentic. So as you can see I'm really really blending this. And then as I'm blending it it is starting to dry which is a good thing. Um, I do sometimes take this other color and throw it like the other gray and throw it in there too. Um, I don't want a ton, but just because it actually just brings some other dimension. And you can see, like, I don't necessarily want obvious veins all the time. Um, I just don't want all of the marble to be white. So then after the dabbing, I'm actually going to take my brush and just do some light strokes through and sort of feather dusting it. Um, my brush is a little bit dry when it gets too dry and I bring it back into the water and I just kind of stroke and feather dust. And that is where I'm getting the blurred lines. Um, this one right here worked really well. That is what I wanna see, nice blurred line instead of just dot, dot, dot stippling, I want a blurred line. And so again, I'm just gonna play with it over and over and over again. Adding more white to my edges just to blend that. And so basically go back and forth. And I will show you part way through um, as I'm doing some more, you'll see some other parts. Okay. I know it's not the best lighting, but I'm gonna try and show you another little spot here. So I did a vein right here, and I realized that the trick is to not um, overdo the veining, partly because it looked too busy and I didn't really like the look of it. So I did the, made a vein, then I'm kind of brushing it, fading it, and you'll notice my brushes are quite dry, um, but the mixing of the wet paint over the dry spots is okay. And so you can see when I'm putting white paint directly over it, if I do that, it actually brings that gray in and smears it a bit. So that's sort of what I wanted to do, because a lot of times the veining is inside the marble and not on the surface. A lot of stippling, a lot of um, just sort of playing around with it. Notice I'm going in sort of all sorts of different directions um, and as it's drying is when I'm kind of feathering it and blending it like that. So if that makes sense to you, um, you see I've got that section done. Got a little bit more to go, and then I will show you the last step, which is sealing it. Okay, and the last step is to put on the top coat, and this is Fusion Gloss Clear Tough Coat that I'm gonna be putting on, and I'm gonna be using a sponge. I did the other side um, with a brush, and it I found it had 
a little bit more stroke marks than I really wanted. So I'm gonna do it with a sponge this time and hopefully eliminate some of those strokes. So this is all dry and the clear coat is really easy. Goes on, I can even just pour it straight onto the counter. And you basically wipe it on a lot, uh, very similar to the Ultra Grip. And a nice even layer. And this is what just gives it the added um, durable finish, plus gives it a little bit of a shine. I wanted it to have a shine, uh, not a flat finish, because I wanted it to look as much like kind of real marble or stone as possible. Okay, so this is the final product I wanted to show you guys. I finished my countertops yesterday. Um, this is what they're looking like. I'm very happy with it. It was a bit of work, but we got her done. Um, my final coat was the tough coat. I did put it on. It's been 24 hours now. Um, like you see, I have set stuff back on it. This side actually was done four or five days ago. So that I am setting stuff on. I'm going to give this side, the newly painted side, um, another couple days before I really start setting things on it because I want it to just have a good cure time. A uh, normal cure time for Fusion Mineral Paint is um, a week for a full cure or a week for the first cure and then a three week period for the full cure. Um, that being said, it's completely wipeable. I've been able to get water on this already and wipe it off. Um, I'm just gonna be really conscious of not putting anything too heavy or um, like something that might stick to it. Like if, if it's a little bit warm or a little bit holding moisture, I'm not gonna set that on it for a little while. Um, so a few questions that I wanna cover because I know people are gonna be asking is how is this gonna hold up? So I have um, been on the Fusion Mineral Paint merchant side of things and kind of followed some other people's stories and what they have done on countertops. There has been success shown on countertops um, lasting two years already. Um, I, I saw one post that she had done it in a hair salon, which would take a lot of wear and tear, a lot of water and moisture, um, and it lasted hers last, like it's two years and it still looks just as new. That being said, this is a kitchen uh, where you have hot things, where you have um, hot things, wet things, knives, things like that. So obviously this is not a marble countertop. This is not indestructible. Um, I will say that outright. This was a simple, cheap Arborite countertop. I didn't have the funds to replace it with something amazing like granite or marble. I just wanted a temporary fix um, until we actually change the countertops out because we have hopefully future plans for an island and then that's when countertops are going to change. So that being said, it is a time being, for the time being project. Um, I have complete faith in Fusion Mineral Paint being as indestructible as it can be in a kitchen. That being said, I'm going to be very aware and very conscious of not putting hot things on the surface as well as not cutting on the bare surface because Fusion cannot claim, cannot guarantee that it is food safe, but the ingredients in Fusion Mineral Paint and their Tough Coat are, contain zero VOCs. They are water soluble or water-based um, and, and completely safe to use for in, um, in, in on countertops and on tabletops and things like that. Um, I do completely trust it. Like I said though, I'm going to be conscious of what I put on it. The, what else do I wanna cover? Um, yeah, so just like any surface that you have, like a wood table or an, um, you know, these countertops beforehand, if I put something of any sort of um, color on it, like if I was making a shake and I had blueberries um, fall on it, it would stain my arborite. So no countertop other than a real stone is gonna be indestructible. So I thoroughly expect to have 
um, things like that possibly happen. I'm just going to try and be careful with it over time. Um, but like I said, it is a temporary fix and in the meantime, I think it looks fantastic. So I'm very happy with it. It's gonna make me happy with my kitchen for another couple years probably. Um, so yeah, if you guys have questions about the technique, about the paint, um, just fire a question in the comment box or send me a message and I'd be happy to answer your questions. So um, I think that's everything. Hope you enjoyed this little tutorial demo of what I was doing in my home this week. Have a great day.